What's good, people? I'm CJ Williams with Culturalist Theory, here to bring you what's sure to be a highly contested ranking. Eh, maybe just a bit. K Dot, Kendrick, Kung Fu Kenny, whatever you want to call them, we're ranking his five studio albums trying to separate the best from the rest. Even though mixtapes and compilations won't be included, you should still do a deep dive, especially with C4, Kendrick's best Wayne impressions over Carter III production. Drop your ranking in the comments and see how it compares to ours. Enough talking, let's get into it. Number five, section 80. Every ranking must start somewhere. Somewhere. So while Section 80 is at the bottom of our list, that's not us equating it to a bad album. Quite the opposite, Kendrick's debut reached a level of quality that many rappers' peaks can't even touch. Laying out the blueprint for how he would approach future albums, we have to tip our hats to the project's conceptual execution, storytelling, and ability to make impactful radio hits. These are all trademarks Lamar would be known for throughout the decade. That being said, this is K-Dot at his rawest. Think LeBron entering the league. Yeah, he was balling with the pros, just don't expect him to knock down his jump shots yet. Still trying to find his voice, his delivery leaves a lot to be desired. Some features on here haven't aged too well either. Yes, we're talking about you, Astrobot, on Keisha's song. Apparently there wasn't enough in the budget to go all in for the John Legend feature. He's not alone though. No Makeup and Tammy's song wouldn't have made our final cut either. Centered around the government's involvement in coke distribution across Cali in the 80s, Kendrick will be compelled to make this project after witnessing his homie catch a 25 year bid. We'll look at section 80 as the genesis of his own CCU or Compton Cinematic Universe, so to speak. Notable features include fellow black hippie members Ab Soul and Schoolboy Q, BJ the Chicago Kid, and GLC. We know casual fans aren't usually concerned with album sales and billboard placements, but even we learned something new while doing our research. Yes, we've seen Lamar reach global superstar status throughout the 2010s decade, but his studio debut is the embodiment of humble beginnings. Selling 5,000 copies in its first week, yes, we said five, Section 80 would debut at number number 113 on the Billboard 200. It's not about how you start, but how you finish. Number four, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. In our initial script, we had this one at the number three spot. It's only a year old following a half decade hiatus, so it could potentially move up the list. But for right now, Mr. Morale hasn't been out long enough for us to determine its true impact. Because how's this one gonna age? In our process to determine whether a project is classic or not, we wait five years before throwing any titles out there. But based on the material and the growth we saw in Kendrick since releasing Damn, it might not be such a bad bet to bank on this one's potential. With the exception of Section 80, we think it's safe to call the rest of his albums classic. Iconic even. Pretty heavy expectations. For the fans who complained about Damn's commercial nature, Kendrick delivers an emotionally charged therapy session. Tracks like We Cry Together, Mother I Sober, and Auntie Diaries are visceral and uncomfortable conversations to have, but necessary ones. Following five years of relative silence, Oklahoma lets his guard down while taking audiences on a journey of healing and understanding. With no subject being off limits, the Compton MC touches on his infidelities, sexual abuse, dysfunctional relationships, breaking generational curses, and a myriad of other subjects we almost never hear being discussed through a hip hop lens. We like some of the changes in direction Kendrick took with this one. Grabbing Kodak for a couple of songs, linking up with the criminally underrated Sam Do on Savior, and you can never go wrong putting Sampha on a hook. We just wish he had left that Ghostface feature in the vault. It wasn't even that bad of a verse, he just completely threw off the chemistry between Dot and Summer Walker. It also didn't quite help that he stretched this one out into double disc territory. The project felt less bloated than most of the double albums we come across, but had he trimmed this one down to the essentials, we'd almost surely be placing it a spot higher. All the criticisms aside, we think the divide between listeners has been a little overblown. It's far from his best work, but anyone who expected him to return after five years with readily digestible music must not have been following his career arc. If you've been under a rock and still haven't given this one a listen, check United in Grief, Father Time, and Count Me Out. If you want to feel for the album without the 73 minute commitment. Hey, do y'all think the Heart Part 5 should have made this standard cut of the project? We know the Heart series normally doesn't make the LPs, but we could have took that over Crown any day. Before we get into our top three, one project from KDOT that we omitted from the ranking is his 2016 project, Untitled Unmastered. Listed as a compilation, the eight track effort consisted of previously unreleased demos of records that didn't make the To Pimp a Butterfly cut. Do you rock with anything on there? If we had included Untitled Unmastered, where would you rank it in this discography? Let's see the answers down in the comments. Number three, damn. 
Following the widespread critical acclaim of his first two major label albums, Kendrick searched for a new sound. He replaces the funk and jazz instrumentals of To Pimp a Butterfly with trap drums and soul samples graciously provided by Mike Will Made It, Alchemist, and Ninth Wonder. Dot's pronounced focus on storytelling, precise delivery, and improved crossover efforts would surprisingly divide fans like never before. On the one hand, you had listeners who saw the project as the next step in Kendrick's artistic growth and praised his ability to adapt to an ever-evolving soundscape. On the other hand, you had those who saw the album as mainstream and critiqued Lamar for not staying true to the techniques that got him to that point in the first place. We know all too well from reading these comments, and yes, we read them all, you can't please everybody. Will we have predicted a Kendrick and U2 team up? Not by a long shot. If you would have asked us what pop star we would have wanted Lamar to enlist, Rihanna probably wouldn't have been at the top of our list. But they worked. The album is cohesive, it's experimental, but most importantly, it's organically Kendrick. If we're going by the Compton Cinematic Universe theory, we believe this is the the third installment in a trilogy of unofficially conjoined albums. When following the subject material, production, and storytelling devices, we get a straight line from section 80 to damn. Almost a Pippa Butterfly certainly feels like an outlier, but hold that thought. Excluding the transitory intro blood, we think the weak link on this one has to be pride, meaning 12 songs were as good or better than a track we would describe as boring and uninspired, but not bad. That makes for an extremely consistent and thorough 14 track LP. We regard songs like Fear, Duckworth, XXX is some of Lamar's best. No wonder Lamar would walk away with a cabinet full of awards and accolades, including, but not limited to, a Pulitzer Prize for Music, Grammys for Best Rap Album, Rap Song, Performance, Music Video, you get it. Yes, there are some pretty commercial pockets on the album, but that's the nature of an artist who sells 603,000 units in their first week. Did we mention he would release a collector's edition with the track list in reversed order? Marketing level genius. With a stat padding project like this, you're probably wondering how we picked two albums over it. The answer is anything but simple. Number two, Good Kid, Mad City. Kendrick's major labor debut is arguably the greatest runner-up in hip-hop history. Steeped in tales of temptation and the consequences that come from it, Good Kid is a cautionary tale of how impressionable people can be negatively molded by their environment. From smoking lace blunts and shooting out of moving vans to witnessing cycles of sexual abuse and losing loved ones, Kendrick leaves no stone unturned when inviting you into the world of survival and depravity. Remember that CC you we were talking about earlier? We're sure if you played Good Kid immediately after Section 80, the only way you'd be able to distinguish the stories is by the shift in production. But if Section 80 deals with the causes of hood afflictions, Good Kid is dealing with the effects. Looking back, we can also see similar issues with the sequencing of the projects. We know fans will be divided in the comments with some agreeing with the number one pick and others placing this at the top of their list. In a discography as deep as Kendrick's, it's hard for us to say there's a wrong answer. Despite the razor thin margin and quality between the two, we can't help but to point out the structural issues this record suffers with. We're not big on real and Compton, period, but to ruin the picture-perfect ending that Sing About Me provided isn't just short-sighted, it's inexcusable. Shave off those last two tracks and we have a crisp 10-track, 57-minute LP. It would have been a closed-loop story, which ironically would be something he implemented again with Damn. Just remember, when telling a story, the little details are always the most important. Well, wait, they did give us Black Boy Fly on the Deluxe Edition. Okay, all is forgiven. Number one, To Pimp a Butterfly. Through his innovative blend of G-Funk, jazz, R&B, and hip-hop, Kendrick's third studio album not only sounds like a love letter to music itself, but a realization of accountability. Potentially spurred by the socio-political climate of the time, or perhaps just a shift in artistic inspiration, this project certainly stands out as a sonic outlier. Entering as a poised MC aiming for the throne, Kendrick would emerge from his cocoon a bona fide superstar. Earning his first of three consecutive chart toppers and counting, Kendrick seemed to take that 2014 Grammy snub personally. This award cycle would see him up the Grammy nominations to seven and walk away with five trophies, including Best Rap Album. Joints like Hood Politics, King Kunta, and The Black of the Berry take aim at subjects like political isolation, white supremacy, and psychological trauma in ways we hadn't seen since Kanye back in 04. On a song-to-song -song basis, Good Kid is arguably more impactful. But when we think of this period, it's hard to see the Black Lives Matter protest from Mike Brown and not hear All Right playing in the background. To Pimp a Butterfly houses Kendrick's best intro, at worst his second best outro, and easily his best supporting cast of album cuts. We think Soundwave, Terrence Martin, and the rest of the production team gave Lamar his most cohesive and timeless sound to date. The album is conceptually dense and doesn't leave a lot of room for casual listens, but like those records your family has boxed up in storage, it'll always be something to come back to. We really racked our brains on this one, but it's hard to find an area on the project that he excelled at elsewhere. Story 
were telling master classes like how much a dollar cost, mama and you have to be in the conversation for his greatest. Melodic grooves like these walls, you ain't gotta lie, and I provide levity in the midst of the storm. But when we heard Pac being interviewed at the end of Mortal Man, we thought Kendrick had either gotten through to Cuba or was the world's best medium. If you listen to it for nothing else, you at least need to appreciate the greatness that is George Clinton, Belial, and Ronald Isley on the same project. That's another culturalist classic in the books. Subscribe to the channel, because if we keep it a buck, where else you gonna find content this dope? Give us a like if you learned something new. Hit that super thanks if your love for the culture permits. I'm CJ Williams, signing off to the next time.